Bruce. What? Scene with Max Steiner's music and the choir of angels. That movie must be one of your proudest memories, is it not, Miss Davis? Well, it certainly was one of the great, great. Well, it was even better than a great part. It was a great, great story. But of course, my favorite story of Dark Victory, when I saw the, the, the film all finished, and I worshiped Mr. Steiner, and he wrote magnificent music for me. But there's only one terrible thing he did to me. As I am getting onto the bed to die, he has a complete choir of angels yes. singing. So I really had no reason to die at all. <laughs> you because were already he, gone. I was already <laughs> gone. And I have kidded him about that way, way, way in the past. He really overdid it on that, I felt. Uh, George Brent, uh, I believe, probably co-starred with you more than any other actor that I can think of. That's right. And in this film, uh, the two of you were just... Well, George was magnificent in this. George was a, um, an amazing person. He very seldom liked the parts he played. He never turned down parts, which was too bad. I think he could have had a much bigger career. But this story he loved. And this yep. part he loved, and this was really a fine, fine job. He had sort of a reputation as being a foil for lady stars at Warner Brothers. Would you well, say that's unjustified? Well, in those days, it was a, a woman's industry. Yeah? As a matter of fact, George once said the only requirement for a leading man on the screen is to be sure that the back of his head <laughs> is cut well, because that's what you see the most of. <laughs> he sounds as though he spoke from experience, so perhaps he yeah. was telling the truth. Well, not with me, he didn't, but I mean, that was what did happen. It was a woman's, it's a man's industry now. Well, that uh, brings me back to one thing I was going to ask you about Miss Fitzgerald. She was quoted as saying that she was kind of terrified of coming out to work with you in this first movie because she heard that you upstaged people. And that you, yes. And that turned out to be far from the truth. No, it was never true of me, not at all. You're only as good as the people around you. And she was very fine in that and a great addition to the film. Another gentleman who uh, was a great addition to the film was uh, Humphrey Bogart, of course, in a rather small role. Yes, but wasn't he good? Oh, it was marvelous. And you had worked with him, of course, in The Petrified, Petrified Forest, Forest, which we'll be seeing Thursday night. Uh, how did you and he get along? Oh, well, we, we were worn us together for many, many years. We didn't work together very often, just those two films, actually. Mm -hmm. But um, no, we, we knew each other very well. And he ended up having a great, great career. He had a very hard time in the beginning uh, to, to get... Petrified Forest really started him. There's another gentleman who's prominently featured, perhaps not as prominent as he is today, Ronald Reagan. How did you like working with Mr. <laughs> Reagan? Well, I sort of... We all sort of thought of him as little Ronnie Reagan. And how could we <laughs> have possibly known what would happen to little Ronnie Reagan? We'll be with you all week, ladies and gentlemen, with Miss Betty Davis following each film, and we're thrilled to have her and you with us. And uh, we'll bid you good evening for now, and look for you tomorrow night with our guest, Betty Davis. <laughs>